This is the SML Vaultcast. Fuck yeah, Earthbound. I that's know that's like all I can. I'm, I've been waiting years for this. Um, how did we do it last time? Did we do me, you, him, or was it? No, it was you, then me, and then and then and announcing then Vogue guess still appears. isn't here, right. but Dingleberry is. Dingleberry, and then Thanks. he's like, "Yeah, youth large, yeah, that's yeah. me." K- Kmart medium, <laughs> Kmart medium. <laughs> I just shipped my pants. I just shipped my pants. I just shipped my britches. All right, what's up, everybody? I'm small. I'm large, medium, still. Still, still, still out sick. Missing. Still out sick with the AIDS. He's actually going to try making this one, but... But know, we didn't want to get he, AIDS, so we he, told him to go away. He's got to take care of what he's taking care of, but... It's that rash we talked about in episode one. <laughs> <laughs> or zero. Episode zero. Episode zero. <laughs> but with us, as Bring usual, is, is Kmart Medium, a.k.a. Youth Large. Yep, yep, yep. That's me. I just shipped my pants. <laughs> Uh, That's my new favorite commercial. <laughs> I don't know if you saw it yet, but what was the game? No, no, no. There's, there's a commercial. No, there's a commercial that there's did that did something similar, but it Where was they're talking about like shipping anything I think from Kmart. Kmart. Yeah. It's, oh that's what God. I'm saying. Really? I yeah, thought, I thought you were referencing pull, pull that trailer. The commercial. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, we could it's, probably pull it out on the speakers. What was that trailer though? That was for was um, Le- Leviathan boats or Leviathan wars. <laughs> Leviathan boats. If, if you're listening to this, and that's a huge if because I don't think anybody actually does, yeah, but right. you have got to look for the trailer for Leviathan boats or Leviathan warships. Leviathan or something like that. It's something Leviathan. Right, you ready? It's, it's, it's the a really best funny trailer, trailer of the year so far. But here's, here's my new favorite. And there's this Kmart crank, trailer. Crank the volume so Wait, the mic picks it up. What's the name of the trail of the ship commercial? My, ship. 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 My pants. Ship. My That's pants. That's the name of the commercial. Ship. This my is pants. this is not the boat game we're wow. talking about now. This is another thing that has a similar joke. This is this is why I'm just like all about fucking Kmart right now. Like it's ship my pants, right here. Ship my pants. You're kidding. You can ship your pants right here. <laughs> you hear that? I can ship my pants for free. Wow. I just may ship my pants. Yeah. <laughs> ship your pants, Billy. You can ship your pants too. I can't wait to ship my pants, Dad. I just shit my pants and it's very convenient. Very convenient. I just shit my drawers. I just shit my nighty. I just shipped my bed. <laughs> if you can't find what you're looking for in store, we'll find it at Kmart.com right now and ship it to you for free. <laughs> wow. Right? It's fucking Has phenomenal. that been on TV? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> yep. I just shit. <laughs> so, small cast episode 10 brought to you by Kmart. Yep, right? <laughs> Apparently. That's where a... you can ship your pants. I Oh no, I just might ship start, my pants. People are going to start accusing us for having money hats now. No, we just like to I ship just our pants. I ship my pants. <laughs> Billy, ship your pants right now. I can't wait to ship my pants. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> but as soon as he said like, "Oh, Kmart medium." I'm like, yeah, "I just might ship my pants." <laughs> But yeah, there's a boat trailer that came out today for a game that Paradox Interactive is putting out, which I'm going to pull up the name of. Right? Is which is it was Leviathan something. I know. Well, you know what? I'm Leviathan sure Battleships. Right. I don't know. <laughs> Play Battleships. It is an it is uh, a turn based strategy thing. Strategy boat game doesn't take place in the clouds because boats don't fly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> According to the trailer. According to the trailer. The, the critics' comment of, Ka! was... Yeah, that was good. Yeah, it's no, a it's, definite you're, highlight. You're gonna, you have to put a link to this when you post the podcast. Oh, um, Lord. You're going to have to link the Kmart yeah, commercial. Called, you're going to have to link the Leviathan... It's called Leviathan Warships. It's a strategy game that will be out on PC, Mac, iOS, and Android. It's going to have uh, cross-platform support. But and it, it's the porniest the trailer. trailer I've ever heard. It's got, like, well, a they, jazzy, yeah, they Jesse said theme. that all the money that they saved on voiceovers, on voiceovers, voiceovers for the trailer and all that stuff they put into the game. So you can't really judge them for that. Like, yeah. What? No. Close the Steam window. I need to make sure that those PAX tickets. Oh yeah, PAX, 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 PAX. PAX. I want to go. To, I want to go to PAX. So d- does that lead us to news where PAX yes. tickets went on sale today? How do I get over there? And the you gotta go to the other side. Other side. Go through the. Yeah, there you go. Oh wow! Why would you it's do like that? fucking backwards. It was accident. Don't hit play on Don't Starve, you fuck. 
<laughs> I want to minimize. To. Okay, I'm sure it'll pop up at some point. Anyway, um, yeah, news today. PAX tickets for PAX Prime went on sale. PAX tickets and for PAX already Prime sold out. Sold out. The, the, <laughs> four, the four day tickets sold out Immediately. instantly. Yes. And Saturday day passes are already phasing out, and I'm in line to get a pair of tickets. Or, no, I guess four tickets. Fuck, because it's four days. Uh, it's a day longer than PAX East was. I want to go! <laughs> Damn it! Um, Even though we were just in Boston and we just went to PAX East. I really Tim almost to, died. Even, yeah, I want to go to this one because the first thing... I didn't even look at any of the other like programs and, and the panels that they're going to have. The first the one first. that I was told about on the first day is a Hey Ash, What You Playing? <laughs> and I'm like... Hey Ash, What You Playing? I, 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 I wasted PAX East. <laughs> like, but, um, no, because I got to play Soul Forge, so it's... Yeah. <laughs> no errors came up on that? This is a long fucking wait. Wow. Yeah. I'm gonna put up Welcome to the queue. This, this is riveting podcast. Anyway, well, hey, yeah, man. So, they they right, got to wait for right, our order, shit. Order. Order in the court. Um, so, big news today was the Nintendo Direct press conference. And fuck yeah, Earthbound. Finally, Earthbound, after years and years and years, finally announced for the Wii U Virtual Console later on this year. And, and, and I just about shipped my pants. And you shipped of, your pants out for of excitement. free. It, I, I'm excited. I I don't know if you guys are huge Earthbound fans or not, but I love the game. If if you know anything about my internet history, I organized a Bound Together remix project for Earthbound. I believe God. that was episode four or five. When that, we talked to Kunal I, about it. Yeah, when Kunal was here, when Coonbag. This guy. Kunal. Yeah. You have a memory. You're you're not old yet. Not yet. <laughs> I'm yeah, actually, um, I, I was just talking to Kunal about that when I saw him recently. About Earthbound and how there's there's talk again, that it came out on the, in Japan yeah. and there's talk of it coming out here. And we're both there's like, it's, there's it's been rumors happen. and I I was saying I'm not going to believe it until they announce it and they announced it and, there, and you just and about shipped your pants. I was <laughs> I woke up looked at my email saw that and I lost my mind like I was going to sleep longer. I'm like no I need to go online make sure that someone posted about this yeah. And no one posted about it on the gaming vault yet, so I actually hopped on, posted a story, and there was a whole bunch of other Nintendo news that honestly I didn't give. Well, you don't nearly but I, as yeah, much you know, of a but, shit about. Yeah, I love. I, I, this is this is just. I'm still excited about it, but this, this is something funny about Trump's all <laughs> about gamers and fans of certain series. Like Earth, Earthbound is a big deal. Don't get me wrong. I I mean I didn't like playing the original one. But I don't think I gave it enough of a chance, so I will play it when it gets re-released. But um, it, I'll say it's going to be a lot harder to get into with how games have advanced over oh, the past no, yeah, that, twenty years. That's the problem is that it was one of those games that I caught wind of as being like amazing, and it's like, oh, cool, I'll check it out. But at the time, I was playing all of the old Final Fantasies too. I was just discovering those and playing yeah. those, and they just felt technically superior, which which made me go, eh, I'm not really into this Earthbound thing. But I think now I'd appreciate it. But uh. It's very retro. Like, in a world of 16-bit games then, it was a very 8-bit throwback game with 16-bit visuals. So, the... the Today, other, the retro fans are going to ship their pants over. They are going to ship almost think their it pants. Was a, I almost think it was a bigger announcement that Nintendo is making a sequel to Link to the Past. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's... Pr- that's is, it, is it an official sequel? Because everything It's I've called heard, Link so, to the Past 2. two. Is it? <laughs> yes. All right, I... I I've heard conflicting stuff that it's just a new game set in the same universe. Well, it is. Yeah, but the title. Well, the I title. I didn't know it was called, officially called Two. Yeah, it uh, is. I it should, should, it should read my Nintendo two. emails a little more. That's what we read. All right. Yeah, it's it. Uh, from what we understand, it's called Two. But as the far video as video we watched. Right, but been. as far as um, storyline and such, it's the same universe as Link to the Past. But it's an alternate storyline. So but I don't know if it happens at the same time or earlier or after. I'm not sure. With how big of a deal Link to the Past is to people, uh, I mean, that, of of the few Zelda games I actually sat down to get through, that was one of the ones that I actually sat down and got through. Yeah. Have Have you finished uh, Link's Awakening on the Game Boy? No. I'm probably one of the few guys that prefer that one to a Link to the Past. But the the big deal about this is Nintendo hasn't has been hesitant to do Zelda sequels. Yeah. 
And the thing is, I don't, I don't know if it's an official sequel. Here, this is the email I got from Nintendo. It says, a new game in the Legend of Zelda series. Nintendo developers are working on a new game set in the world of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, which launched for the Super NES in 92. The game makes use of the 3D abilities of the Nintendo 3DS and allows Link to become a drawing and move along walls. A 3D video of the new game is now available to download in the Nintendo eShop. The game is scheduled to launch this holiday see, season. It see, doesn't we watch an actual trailer. We watched, that, we watched the trailer for the game. And the official that, Nintendo yeah. trailer? Yeah, because yeah. what's his name right. was on before it, explaining yeah. it. And he was explaining it the was, game. It was in the direct. Play. I didn't catch the direct because I slept through that shit. Well, I'm just I going mean, off what I got in the email. Yeah. So if they officially announced it... That's but awesome. The the big deal of this is the fact that I, it comes back around to Nintendo as a company too. Of they they're starting to do a few things that they don't normally do, uh, which is now we're seeing a, a sequel or an expansion of a Zelda universe that people have want. I, yeah. I mean, people are are going to like that. People are going to be like, "Yay!" You know, I haven't goodness. gotten excited for a, a Zelda I, I, game in quite some time. I'm excited for this. I one. I wouldn't be surprised. I would be surprised I'm, to, I'm to hear I'm excited for the Wind Waker HD remake, too. Uh, I would be surprised to hear apprehension about this title, because this is what people wanting Nintendo to do for a long time. It's like, look, we just want more fucking Zelda. We want yeah. more of what we like. Yeah. So that's a big deal. Earthbound, they're, them finally bringing this down is a big deal, because then it's, it's saying that maybe they are opening their, their selves up to being like, people want this game. Yeah. You know, let's let's give them this game. Be it, it's going to be on the Wii U Virtual Console, so about three people will probably play it. <laughs> My hope is, if it sells well, it'll open the door for Mother Three. Exactly, like the other the sequels that never came over. That would be big. It would. That's what Nintendo needs to do. Is they need to realize, like, oh shit, like this is a big deal. Yeah. People want these games. But they are. They seem to honestly be treating this like a big announcement. The header of the email is Nintendo announces new games in the Legend of Zelda, Yoshi's Island series, and, at long last, dot, 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 Earthbound. Like, they're treating that like a massive, massive deal. And to me, that's the massivest deal. Like, I have a huge shit-eating grin on my face right now just thinking that Earthbound... A shit-eating shit shit grin. grin. Yeah. Earthbound is coming <laughs> back to America officially for real. And I'm going to buy the fuck out of that game the minute it's released. <laughs> like, I'm going to find friends who own a Wii U and be like, Are you buying Earthbound? No. Here's ten bucks in eShop credit. Fucking buy it. Like I so see that's what's actually kind of exciting <coughs> to me is that I mean now I I'm not personally like oh my god Earthbound. However, to hear you and I know other people are going to be that way towards this game. Yeah. And essentially, it's going to be something that would be sold for you know what, I'd say what like ten bucks. I'm going to guess eight nine bucks. So let's say even if we highball it, 10, 10, 10, maybe even if 15 if they get greedy. I'd pay 20, I'd pay 40, I, I don't still, give a shit. But still, um, to see people get that excited over a game, which in today's market is only going to cost 10, maybe $15, yeah. I think, you know... It says a lot about it the It says a lot more, exactly. Franchise. It says a lot more about the, uh, you know, the game itself and what people really want from the industry right now yeah as opposed to just well i'm just gonna wait until something really piques my interest and then maybe i'll buy it i'll have to do some research first but then you know something like this comes along like well fuck it's only 10 15 dollars i'm just gonna buy it Hell yeah. just go for it you know because even for me i mean like that's kind of how i felt with diablo i mean i did some research on it before but I was just like, no, I have to have this. Like, it's just, there, there's no excuse for me to not get this game. Yeah. Um, and I haven't really felt that way for many other games that have come out recently, uh, aside from Soul, Soul Forge, but that's going to be free to download. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Monaco looks absolutely, like, Monaco we played it, so we played the uh, the beta, well, I guess it, it was the, beta it was a, or it alpha. It was a prototype version of the game, which is what basically got them the recognition. And then they, I, I'm assuming that they got funding and went out and built a, a new version of the game. Yeah, with, but it is fun. More fully it's fun realized. as shit. Um, that was actually some of the fun most, as ship. Fun, fun as ship. Sh fun as ship. <coughs> um, There's no swearing ever on this podcast. No, so. no fucking um, swearing at all. No. 
but uh, that was the most fun that I had had uh, recently gaming. And that was just me. Well, it was me, you, and uh, Piccolotti. Yeah. So, and even just the three of us, like, going through, I think we only went through, like, one or two levels. But I had a blast. Well, you and me went through. Well, we like went through a couple. Six or seven. But with, with Piccolotti, we went. That was, but it was such a fucking blast. Maybe like that was, will be your Earthbound, but uh, <laughs> Earthbound and Link to the Past Two aren't the only two things that happened uh, on the Zelda news. Apparently, yeah, allegedly on the Zelda news, it was announced that Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons are both coming to the 3DS Virtual Console on May 30th, which I which think ones is were cool. Those, those uh, were the two made cool. by Capcom that linked together. They were They're released at the same games. time. Yeah, they, they cool. kind of flew under the radar. Yeah, I don't remember this it was, at all. I think it was near the end of the Game Boy Color life cycle. Okay. And they were two Zelda games released at the same time. And if you beat one, you got a password that you could enter in the other one that unlocks extra secrets and content in that game to kind of continue on the story. But if you oh, beat, they're linked together. If you beat both games, though. You got a true ending. Yeah, you have to, if you beat both and punch in both uh, both passwords, it gives you it gives you a different ending boss fight with a new ending. Weird. Yeah, yeah. but that's that's pretty awesome though. That's, I'm, that's I'm cool sure a concept. lot of Zelda fans missed those the first time around, so it'll be cool to see people get a true shot at those finally. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Yoshi's Island, a new. Yoshi's I'm excited Island for that. Game is I liked the uh, the Yoshi Island game. I just hope that Baby Mario doesn't cry like an asshole the entire game again. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if that happens, I might not want to play it because I hate children. So, <laughs> no, that's I'm I'm not even like I despise children. I feel sorry for the people that have had to put up with me <laughs> as a child to this point, and uh, and every time I see a child, I just want to pump them. Yeah, well, if they're if they're well behaved. No, I hate all of them. Well, really you do. you are a hateful I like, person. I, like, I really, I like when it comes to children, I am I, I am the biggest Grinch I could possibly ever I, I like kids until they get too close to me. Nice. Gross. Uh, Donkey Kong Country <laughs> Returns 3D comes Ooh, out May 24th. That'll be awesome actually. So, Donkey Kong Country Returns, the Wii game, coming to the 3DS. Uh, That's aw- Yeah, I'm excited for that. Ho- hopefully they got rid of all like the motion control bullshit you had to do in that game and just do button presses now. I think that's the only thing that held back Donkey Kong Country Returns. It was the force. It still did really like, well, though, didn't it? It did. It sold yeah. like 5 million copies. It did really well. And the new version is going to have like 8 new stages that you could play after the main game. And it says here a new mode optimized for handheld play with new items and mechanics. Sweet. So we'll see, we'll see how they handle that. But as long as they don't fuck up what Retro did, it sounds it sounds be awesome, awesome to me. Because I mean, like I've been looking for some more 3DS stuff. I'm glad that there's like a lot of 3DS stuff that's going to be coming out that I'm yeah. excited for. Because I this, have the conference was nothing very on my 3DS, 3DS right centric. now. Like, well, it's <coughs> making the money now. Yeah. I play I play Street Fighter on my 3DS, and that's it. Uh, Mario and Luigi Dream Team. Oh I'm yeah, the Mario and Luigi Inception. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so a new Mario and Luigi game taking place in Luigi's head. So God knows how much S and M shit's gonna be in there. Inception. There was a whirlwind of Luigi's in the trailer. Yeah, like it's, this is like Year of Luigi, which is awesome. That's kind of cool, actually. Luigi, Luigi, my he, boy. He deserves it. Long time, <laughs> long time coming, Luigi. It is thirty years, and he's finally getting a year to break out and be a star. Oh, wasn't there a a fucking Mario Golf thing? That yeah. Too. Yep. Uh, Mario Golf World Tour. Is that 3DS or 3DS? World Tour Online. Nice. Yeah, and it's online. They're going to have online, I don't know if they're tournaments exactly, but real-time online It could matches. be like a ladder system or something. Might be. But I'm thinking it's going to be like Tiger Woods or Hot Shots where a lobby of maybe 10, 20, 30 people all hop into a game and play together. That'd be awesome. That's be really, so that's rad. And I love the Mario Golf games. I hope it keeps... Some of the RPG elements that other handheld Mario Golf games have had that have never translated to the console versions. Like the console versions are just like the... golf games. The handheld would have like RPG stat elements and upgrades and oh, like sick. walking around the clubhouse, talking to people. Oh, weird. So I'd love to see that happen. Uh, Animal Crossing New Leaf comes out June 9th. 
and it's going to have its own special 3DS XL system. Ah, really? Which it really doesn't look It doesn't go. It's the white one with Yeah, the, it's the white one with uh, like yeah, leaf whatever. and little shitty I still icon. want an XL. I want an XL. Jordan wants an XL. I want to get her the Pikachu one despite her wanting to get something different. I want the Pikachu one. I told her Pikachu one awesome. right here, motherfuckers. We, we could stab him and rob him. Yeah, you could stab me if you want. There's going to be a lot of blubber to penetrate, but... <laughs> oh, look at that. That's so awesome. Look like, back, how could you too. not, it's all the like... Way around. <laughs> yeah, how could you that's not sweet. want that? Like, that's that's definitely the coolest looking DS. <laughs> no, other than that that one that was over in Japan that's not coming over. Which one? With all oh, the fucking the demon crazy one. demons and shit on it. I can't remember what that's for. It might be for... It was Shin for Megami some sort of game. Or oh, it might be the Shin Megami one. That one looks but, uh, disgusting. It looks good. yeah. Shin Megami Tensei Four is coming out. Uh, wow. What's the date on that one? Because in July sixteenth, <laughs> it's going to be kind of pricey forty nine ninety nine for a three DS game. Ooh. But the first shipment is going to come in a limited box set that has you know the usual soundtrack CD, a special slipcase. And a massive 176 page strategy and design book that's like first part strategy guide and art book. And that's a lot of pages for and a it's, DS it's going to be like a full size, well, maybe not absolute full size book, but it's not going to be the size, of a, yeah, the size of a 3DS case. Yeah, the size of a 3DS case. It's yeah. going to be at least double sized case, which looks awesome. Because that'd be even funnier if they made it the size of a 3DS case and just like 400 and pages. <laughs> It's thicker than the game case. <laughs> the, the, the soundtrack CD is also going to be a collection CD that offers tracks specially selected from across the 20-year history of the Mega Ten franchise, which I think will be pretty freaking awesome. That could be, that could be interesting, yeah. Yeah, I'm eager for that one. Uh, Professor Layton is yes. coming back. New game next year. Professor cool, cool. Layton. Also Yay. next year, finally, they announced Bravely Default is coming to America. What is that? Square Enix RPG that has had massive, massive buzz. Uh, the, it has a little unique twist in that you can skip a turn in battle and deal more damage your next turn. So you could like, well, build yourself up. Kind of so like can, Pokemon? Yeah, you can use it here. The Pokemans? It's also like, to have AR... Sancho uses freaking Sandblast or whatever. Yeah. Or, his attack rises. Going to have AR functions, multiple endings, unique wireless features. But with all the buzz it's getting, it's pretty cool that it's finally coming to America. I haven't seen that many games actually use the AR thing. Like, and really utilize it. Another one using it. New Mario Party coming out this year. Nice! I love yep. Mario Party so much. It's going to have the usual board game elements. And then it's also going to have a 30-floor tower climb. Not sure how that's going to be handled. Awesome! As well as <laughs> AR card games and Street Pass battles. Yeah, Street Pass! I'll finally have something to use Street Pass with. Sweet. Uh, download front. They're going to have a new Mario and Donkey Kong game coming out. Oh, like Where? those those puzzle things? Yeah. The minis, uh, instead of trying to track down or like defeat Donkey Kong, I think it's more of a like a work together kind of thing. Like Lemmings? But possibly. I, cool. I didn't yeah, really the, see the much on it. Kinda like Lemmings, so. But uh, 180 stages, so there's going to be fuck. plenty of content. Oh, what else? Level 5 are going to have their trio of games coming out for the eShop. Yeah, that stupid Kenji Inafune one that looks stupid. <laughs> and then, the name was cool. And and bugs bugs we, versus tanks. I, I got excited. I, I saw the video <laughs> and I was like, "This looks like the stupidest game in the world." Yeah. I haven't seen the videos for him. It, looks, it, looks, it literally lo think of think of what would pop into your head when you think tanks versus bugs. Tanks the, versus bugs. The graphics look like an original DS title, and literally in the video they showed like uh, a few World War One style tanks or World War Two or whatever. Like shooting a giant bug that was, you know, a little bit bigger than the tank. Uh, I guess the plot is they get shrunken, the tanks get shrunken down, and you have to fight bugs. Huh. But um, like it seriously looked like a like a N sixty four or original DS game. You know what? It, and it looked clunky and it looked unfun. You know what it looked <laughs> like to me? It almost looked like a WarioWare, like uh, mini game. I, I don't. Uh, uh, like the newer, like I mean, like obviously graphically it wasn't, but like sort of. Uh, That's what it honestly reminded I me of. He, I think like, he's drunk. 
I don't know. I'll have to watch no, the video. Yeah, well, watch the video, dude. It, it just looks fucking but horrible. You mentioned Wario. Game and Wario is hitting the Wii U. Nice! <laughs> June 24th. Nice! That finally has a date. As well as Pikmin 3, which was supposed to be a launch title <laughs> and a launch window title. It's finally coming August 4th. Now it's just a, so, now it's just a title. Yeah. Who cares? It's been years in the making. I can't wait to get my hands on it. I don't think I've ever played a Pikmin game. They're fun. You'd probably like them. Probably. I don't know. I like murder. Do you like well, them? yeah, use your Pikmin to murder bugs. Or just, or just chuck them all in the water and watch them die. Oh, okay, then I could probably get in that. <laughs> murder, murder, murder. And then next week, there's supposed to finally be a system update for the system that uh, speeds up the menu loading times. Thank God. And then shortly Thank after God. is the official launch of the Virtual Console. I mean, oh, okay, so they've just been adding bullshit onto it, just being like, well, th we're just going to leave this here for later. Like... <laughs> Well, they, a couple virtual console games have trickled out. They've been doing their Famicom 30-year anniversary thing, where for 30 days at a time, they have a different virtual console title on the Wii U available for 30 cents. Like, there was Balloon oh, yeah, Fight, right. there was Punch Balloon Out, F-Zero. Yeah. I think Kirby is on sale now, Ooh. Kirby's Adventure, for 30 cents. Oh, man. That's brutal. I would... I'd buy the fuck out of that. Hell yeah. I think Super Metroid's coming for 30, 30 cents. 30 cents? 30 fucking cents. That's pretty ludicrous. That is. So, ludicrous. Luda. Luda. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, Earthbound will not be too far behind. It really depends. I mean, like, it's, it's one thing for them to announce it. It's another thing for it to, like, you know, come at a reasonable time. Like... Yeah, I, I, they say this year, so I'll be patient. So this year it it'll out. be it'll be December, <laughs> the last week of yeah. December, the last day. It'll be like New Year's <laughs> Eve, and they'll be like, "Yeah, hey, it's out." Like, I could see it being a Christmas release. I really could. Yeah. Like Merry Christmas! You're finally getting this game. Now shut, shut the, the fuck, fuck up! up. <laughs> Quit your bitching. So that was the Nintendo news. Massive, um, massive Nintendo day for sure. Yes. Would have yeah. liked to see a bit more Wii U news because that could use a lot of love right now. Uh -huh. But, fuck, or, I'm excited with the news we got. Fucking Earthbound. Earthbound! <laughs> finally coming! We'll have to do an Earthbound podcast <laughs> at some point. What's the other big it, news? It'll just, be, it'll just be Joe sitting there going, <laughs> Earthbound, huh, Earthbound. Uh, the whole time. You guys like, what the fuck is so good about this game? <laughs> Yeah, and you know, it's it's one of those games that it's tough to hype because it's, it's very it will if you hype like it, people will play it and they'll go, I don't get it. I don't like understand. why why do people give a shit about this yeah, game? Yeah, you have to it's a game that you have to be like, you should check it out. Don't don't hype them on it. And yeah, I don't think anyone else should be excited as I am for this. This this but whole this first is my, half hour of the podcast is just for him. I I've been <laughs> fully erect this entire time. Yeah, the table has been tipping towards <laughs> Hell. Towards Kmart Medium. Yeah, Kmart Medium, which the viewers can't <laughs> see. Ship the viewers in my pants. <laughs> so, other uh, big news. Sony still doesn't know how to update a fucking store. Sony doesn't know how to do fucking anything, right? They started maintenance on the PlayStation Store Monday. As of now, Wednesday, it's still going on. PAX has sold out of Saturday tickets. Oh, boss. Holy shit. Hey, Kyle. Oh, wait, <laughs> this just in. The PlayStation Store is finally updated after being down for the better part of a day. Okay, so PlayStation Store's back up, and I can't get the Soul Sacrifice demo, because I'm here, so... Well, yeah. It literally happened while we were recording this. That's the end of this week's podcast. <laughs> yeah. I need to go home and fucking update. We should um, go, um, just because of time this week, I think we should go right into Reader Mail. So, Reader Mail. Let's see. Reader, reader yeah. Mail. Let us load this up. Um, have we received any entries to the meaning of the S, M, and L? I don't know. Let's go through all the mail since they're not really segregated. But uh, it's racist. Looks, looks like we missed the mail from last week from Derek Terrence, is it? Derek Terrence. Derek Terrence. Let's see. Saw your post, so here you go. It seems like most mainstream games nowadays barrage their users with tutorials from beginning to end. When I look back to titles like Mega Man or Mario, it really felt like a learn-as-you-go type of game. 
Eventually, you find yourself trading tips and tricks with other players, all of which you've personally discovered. So where did those kind of games go, and why is it now that when I find them, they are so few... Yeah, there's so few in between. Shouldn't be far Few in and far between. Yeah. Or more importantly, what are your thoughts on game companies dumbing down potentially great titles for their buyers? Durka. Uh, that's that's really easy. That's, yeah, that, that the has, internet. <laughs> no, no, it has nothing to do with the internet. It has, it has something to do with marketability of a title. Yep. And, um, like, once I brought up Call of Duty last week of how... Um, people get to see it, and they see how smooth it runs, and they see how fast and furious and entertaining it can be, and people want to jump on it. And it's it's not just how, um, I don't want to say good that game looks, because it doesn't look that great anymore, but it, the it looks fun, Appealing and it looks easy, and it appeals people. to a broad category of people. That that that's what a lot of game companies are doing anymore. Is they're they're dumbing down their titles in order to appeal to a larger market because they know that yeah we'll lose a few hundred or a few thousand core fans of the series, but we'll gain you know tens of thousands of people who are casually interested in this who might buy this title or buy DLC or buy the next title after that because they tried the other one and, and enjoyed it, even if they didn't finish it. It's it's the whole thing is that they know that they can put less effort into complexity and turn it into a higher selling title. Yeah. Which that that's all that gets. But he also to. mentioned like the tips and tricks and finding things as you go. A lot of that's gone because of the internet. Where yeah. back in the day, well, yeah, but of well, no, he's saying through. like in the game itself. See, like even like when I, we were playing Castle Crashers yesterday, which we were, I, fun, yeah. that was that was awesome. The the my so first fun. experience with that. But we were playing Castle Crashers a little bit yesterday, and every single time you would hit a level, they would be like, "Oh, don't forget to try this, and don't forget to do this, and don't forget to try this, and you should you should probably try this too when you're fighting." And I'm just like, "Dude." Let me fucking fight people. Yeah, they'd be trying yeah. to like, do a combo while like the game's still going on and you're still in the middle of a fight. Yeah, and then like this big pop up window would come up, like Slow especially with a, we had three people playing, the, a pop up window would come up and just be like, "Oh, you unlocked a new combo," and it's three fucking buttons, and then it's yeah. like, uh, but it leaves it up on the screen and it's so fucking big that like I couldn't even see where I was going half the well, goddamn time. I think time. he's even talking about secrets though. Like, look at Super Mario Brothers one. That first warp zone in World One Two. Well, yeah. Where, where did you first find out about that? Probably uh, I in fucked school. up. No, I, <laughs> I no, I, I like I waited too I was long and I was, around. Yeah, like lots lots of my friends didn't know about that until I showed them. Yeah. See, one, once again, that brings us back to the the complexity issue, though. That this this is one of those things where they know that they don't have to do that anymore, and people yeah. they don't have to put all this extra work into it. There's there's less love, uh, especially less love of labor going into a lot of these games. And then, um, I mean, it, it costs the company more to make these people go back and do those things, so they're not going to pay these people more to do it. I don't know, look, look at Arkham Asylum, that hidden room that showcased See, but Arkham there was a City. lot of love that went into that game. Though. There was, and even that game, it went how long without being found, and then when it was found, well, immediately on the internet, and everybody knew about it. If this if this was 20 years ago, that'd be something you'd be hearing whispers of in high school or in elementary school. That, oh man, did you hear about the hidden room or until in Arkham I, Asylum? Or a Devil's Advocate, a or until a magazine got wind of it and published it, and yeah. then it would be, and then it would be fairly common knowledge. But but, but that wouldn't be the information way that our, that's at your fingertips. That's just the way that our community. Well, this, this has ruined Magic the Gathering. This has ruined a lot of a lot of card games and sport card games, competitive card games and things like that too. Because everybody does net decks. They look up the best strategy because somebody did the actual statistics right. of what is the best. That's that was honestly one of the main reasons why me and him got out of it. Like if Magic, to me, it wasn't when fun I was playing it, it, out it wasn't it wasn't fun to go up to an F and M and just be like, oh, okay, well, you know, we would buy like maybe a booster box or like a fat pack of a new of a new set that would come out and then we would just try and incorporate whatever cards that we got into the decks that we already well, built not just that like we would we would come up with new and fresh ideas based off of what we could figure out it wasn't let's go online and see what's winning all the tournaments right now which is right. some cheese ball move yeah but i mean coming bringing it back to the the thing though the reason why we don't see that anymore is it's it is a complex thing that um Companies just don't 
don't like to do because of their bottom line anymore. Some companies do. They're, they're like, for instance, uh, I mean, most indie companies, any indie game you'll play will have secret shit in it yeah. anymore. Um, and then Dark Souls uh, and that company, those games, holy shit, Dark Souls, Demon Souls. Since Demon Souls, um, they, there's an item that had showed up in both games. It was a pendant. Nobody ever knew what the fuck it did. And uh, it wasn't until like a year or two after Dark Souls came out that the director in an interview said, it doesn't do anything. It's an item you can start <laughs> with. And he's like, he's like, it actually, it, it, it doesn't do anything. And there was, there was rumors that like, if you have the item at this, this time of the day, at night, um, you know, fucking, uh, you, and you go to this, this area of the game, and you hit a stone three times, you know, a ghost will appear and it'll give you this, you know, item or whatever. Like, there's, there's all these rumors that's, that's flying That's the around. shit I miss from middle yeah. school, is just rumors. Well, yeah, that's, that's, that's what Dark Souls did. That's the, one of the reasons why I love that game so much, is it became... Chris and I sat here and played it on two monitors, side by side, each playing our games. And we would talk about what we were figuring out. Because we would go to different areas and stuff, and we'd be like, oh man, so there's this boss, you know, how did you get past him? I can't figure it out. People even online, the game's so hard, that a lot of people online had so many different conflicting things of how to get past these certain areas. That's, that is golden game design, and the reason why you don't see that that often is because it's fucking hard as shit to do. Yeah. And look how, I mean, Dark Souls is a very, it is a good hit for that company, but it, I guarantee you it sold nowhere close to what any other game that was that that was a hit that year did probably not. You know? I mean, that's just that game is unforgiving, but it's an amazing mystery of a game. Yeah, but you know what? And and this is kind of how I felt about like when I was uh, still working with you down at the shop, and I was going back and playing a bunch of uh, NES titles that were uh, moderately difficult. Um, because it was one of those kind of things where it's like the me personally, I I like the challenge, but I don't like the amount of time that you necessarily have to put into certain things. And when I had made my way through Ninja Gaiden One and Ninja Gaiden Two, um, dude, like I I felt so accomplished after I beat the game, and and you know I told him about it, and he was like, well, how the fuck did you get past this part, and how'd you do this? And I was just like, well, I figured this out, and I figured this out. Like, I felt that much more, like, I just felt better about my gaming experience because I got to figure it out, as opposed to being babied and just, like, you know, felt like my hand was being held and just go, go this way, and then go this way, and don't forget to do this, because this is exactly what you're going to have to do to get past this part, and we're just going to remind you just just in case you forgot like i just i hate that about a lot of modern games it's just like just get me into the fucking game let me figure it out and if i can't figure it out well then it sucks to be me then i should probably go try and you know ask someone but yeah. don't like don't literally spell it all out for every single person that's yeah. going to go and play that game like that's what I really don't like about it. I think the developers now they're stuff. just more concerned with wanting players to experience the whole game. Well, this this brings me back around to my usual discussion of mobile games are the future and indie games are the biggest thing that we have going for us because those people are going to be putting these things that that they played and they loved into the games that they're making because they don't have to answer to companies and if they do, they are the company. They're gonna be they're gonna be the guys going in and saying, you know, I grew up with uh, Ninja Gaiden, and I want you know I want this type of game, or I grew up with Earthbound, and I want this type of game with these types of you know pieces of complexity in it. That's gonna be the um, that's where we're gonna get these experiences from in the next decade, or some of the companies that have free reign, like um, what's a what's a good company? Two fifty one. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, Suda51, From Software, um, what's it, CD Project that's doing that sick-looking cyberpunk game? Uh, Possibly. The, the people who do The Witcher. Yeah, I mean, CD Project, right. Um, <coughs> you know, there, there are companies out there that are going out and doing new and inventive things, but it's very few and far between. Yeah. And, um, but those, those companies make those games because 
they are prescribing to our market, and uh, there is a market there, which will get tapped by more companies as time goes on. Uh, I just I just hope innovation starts to come back because like Dead Space three kind of mm. flop, yep. and then in March alone, Everybody do with Gears flop. of War Judgment, <laughs> Gears of War Judgment, and God of War Ascension both fairly flopped. I, like neither of them. They came and went so 000. fucking fast yeah. to me. It's not even funny. It's like everybody was like, "Oh yeah, new gears, new gears," and I was like, "All right, just I mean, let I'd me love know the new gears. It. it was a great game. It was a great step forward for the series. But people are burnt out on the same shit. Mm-hmm. Anyway, next, next question, question from Amanda Brown. She was the one who was at WrestleMania. Oh okay. Hi Amanda. Uh, hi oh, SM. Actually, I forgot. Uh, earlier today, I hopped on League um, for like a couple minutes. She, I know that she had requested me as a friend on there and not thinking because I'll get like a bunch of requests from people that I don't fucking know and just decline them instantaneously. I accidentally did that. So if you're listening, send me another one and call me an idiot. So, yeah, sorry. You're a dick. <laughs> Hi, SML. I've been listening in on your podcast, and I understand that you have some pretty detailed views about video games. No. <laughs> no. I guess you can cons- you could consider this an opinion question. I've been trying to dig a little deeper into the vast world of video games, and I'm a little tired of the AAA title games and looking for something that's a bit off the beaten path. Can you give me a few titles that are one of those under-the-radar gems? It doesn't matter what era it's been in. What are your favorites that never really took the spotlight? Shadows of the Damned, damn it. Oh, yeah, Shadows of the Damned was <laughs> Dude, a that game fantastic was console game. So good. I uh, loved that fucking so game. So much pedigree in that game. And uh, Shadows of the Damned was a really good one. If uh, That's on uh, PlayStation 3 or 360. 360. I'm going to go with Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. It's, I didn't it, get a chance to try that either. It, it was a little bit of a bigger title, I guess, but it obviously didn't sell as well as it needed to because 38 Studios is gone. But it's what Fable 2 and Fable 3 wished it was. Ooh, that's heavy. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's the best that's Fable really game heavy. I ever played. I, I love the game. I'm, I'm very sad that we'll never get more. Hmm. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of like some of the other ones for me personally. Oh. Henry Hatsworth and the Puzzling Adventure on the yeah, DS. Absolutely. That game was DS. DS, yep. What is that? Like puzzle game mixed with a platformer. platformer I, yeah. I, I one first, on each screen. You can if you can actually get and I think it was up it was, here. It was, it was like two dollars and ninety nine cents, seventy like, percent off. Two, three dollars. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Find that shit and play it. Huh? Yes, Henry Hatsworth. And it's funny, it's like quirky, yeah, it's very, it's but it's very like... funny and it's very fun. There's a slight difficulty curve as the game the game nears its climax. Yeah, but... holy shit, does it get like kind of it wacky at the end. Fun. Um Should we go with Fire Emblem Awakening? Do you think that's no, under fuck the radar off, enough? Fuck you. <laughs> no. <laughs> fuck you and no. of course you wrote it on. Etri and um, Odyssey. Etri I mean, and Odyssey. See, you know what though? I mean like even for me personally, like I always talked about uh um, Advance Wars, and there was a lot of people that were just like, I have no idea what that is. And it's, you know, I used to play the shit out of that on my GBA. Um, even, like, I don't know, like, there were, there were two games that I absolutely always fucking loved when it came to, like, the older, like, well, I, I should say, uh, I think both of them were on Genesis. Um, Gunstar Heroes, which you can get on uh, the Xbox Live Arcade, um, for like, I don't know, like maybe five, bucks. five bucks or something like that. Um, yes, three. I've, I, I did speed runs of that game so many times in my life, but I've enjoyed it every single playthrough. Um, that's a lot of fun. Uh, and then there's another game that I think I might have like brought up like a couple weeks ago when I was in your store. Um, also for Genesis called uh, Subterranea. Um, oh yeah, that game's that game's pretty wild. Sub Subterranea, you um, you control like a spaceship kind of thing, and you have uh, missions that you have to do to complete the levels. Um, the way that it works is it kind of has like the way that you control a ship is almost asteroid esque. Hmm. Um, you have a, th- a thruster, and you just kind of you know turn the ship to whatever direction you want to go. However, there is a um, there's a gravitational pull constantly pulling the ship downwards when you're not using the gas. Huh. So, you know, you'll fly up to a certain portion, and then you'll just 
kind of casually down. drop down. Um, but there's a fuel and a shield system. If your fuel drops th and while you're in midair, then you'll just crash and burn and die, and then it's you also, go back over it. Like it's also the game where Bioshock stole the skyhook system from. <laughs> there is no, there is. There's a skyhook system on like the like a, second a or third level, um, and you hook the ship onto it, and instead of using your gas, you'll literally just. Use the, zip you'll just up. zip around on this on this thing. If you get hit and you get knocked off, then you have to find. You can only attach to the hook on the ends of the of the thing. So it's like you can't just hook onto it in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the beam, so to speak. So you have to actually hook it onto it on one end and then just like zip down. And but it, it's so much fun. There's a ton of levels. I never beat it because it was actually like it, it it actually gets really really ridiculous after a while. Um, but it, it was one of those games that, like, nobody, like, I, I talked about it for years and years and years and years, and every single time I've ever brought it up, they're like, I have no idea what the fuck that is. Like, <laughs> that and, uh, I think it was, like, Ranger X, uh, which was another, uh, Genesis game that I actually really enjoyed. Um, it was, you're, like, this mech suit kind of guy. It's almost like a platformer kind of thing. Um, but, uh, that... That game was a lot of fun too, and you know, and maybe it was just I got really niche weird titles when I had my Genesis, but like those three games in particular, Ranger X, um, Subterranea, and um, Gunstar Heroes, those were like my three all-time favorites for that console, and the only one that I mentioned to people and that they knew what I was talking about was Gunstar Heroes, yeah. because it was on uh, the Xbox Live Arcade. So, I mean, like, if you're looking for older stuff, those are th some older examples that I would kind of suggest. But. On the PC front, a newer one that's pretty fun, um, Air Mech. I think that's also coming out on Xbox and PS3. Oh, is that that one that was uh, that browser-based thing? Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a browser-based game at first. Now it's on Steam. And it's, a, uh, it's sort of like a League of Legends MOBA type of thing. There's two bases. But it's... It's also partially based off of an old Genesis game called Herzog's Vi. And uh, what it is is you pilot a mech, but and it's like a top-down view. And uh, the mech can turn into a jet, and you can fly over buildings, and or you can, fl you can fly around the map, then land and like shoot as your mech and stuff. You can shoot in the air, too. But from the air, you can't hit the ground. From the ground, you can't hit the air. But um, units are... Uh, infantry units are coming out of each base and mutually killing each other in the middle um, but on their way they will get inside of a building and capture it for you there's little buildings littered throughout so what you try to do is you try to capture as many of the buildings as you can they can be taken away from you by in enemy infiltration and uh, you can build tanks and all sorts of crazy shit out of these buildings and you can pick them up in your jet and fly them and land them and give them orders to attack or defend or, uh, or what have you and it's it's really it's really entertaining. It's very fast paced, um, and it's free. Another good one is, uh, but I, it's kind of tough to play anymore. Um, Thread Space Hyperball on uh, you like on space the PC. Games, don't you? This was I, well, I, I can't even describe <laughs> this game. This is one of the most original titles I've ever played in my life. But it was very difficult it had, it had a, kind of a steep learning curve and the community is very unforgiving because you get into a game and shit's exploding everywhere and you're like what the fuck is happening <laughs> <laughs> and then um by the time Just you get like any that. sort of grasp of it the, the level's over and you feel horrible because you're you like somehow team killed everybody and <laughs> i like i can't describe the game though if, you, if you're curious look up a trailer it's pretty wild very fun i don't know if anybody still plays it uh, yeah. I got two it. myself, a new one and an old one. The new one, kind of borderline, I'm going to say Rock Band Blitz. A lot of people didn't Rock really Band give... Rock Blitz? Yes. A PSP? No. That's Rock no, Band. That's oh, Rock you mean... Band. Blitz is the one for XBLA and um, PSN. A, a lot of people didn't give it a chance because what, it's not a... It? It's is an it? arcade-style game where instead of using drums or a guitar instrument, you're just using the controller. It's so it's styled, like Stepmania. No, it's styled after, like, amplitude or frequency. So, where... like, Step Mania. No, you don't step on anything. <laughs> right, you don't step on anything for Step Mania. You I use don't, a keyboard. I, I thought that was Beat Mania. No. Step Mania was the PC port for, like, a bunch of, like, uh, DDR and 
What was the other? Okay, which involves in stepping. No, you, you use your you keyboard. Shoot. Okay. Anyway, this has... <laughs> you you this literally, it was the four arrows, but you use the arrows on your keyboard and you press the... the okay, uh, that, yeah. that sounds like it's completely missing the point of DDR. Anyway, Rock Band Blitz it has the five instruments, and each instrument has a left and a right note that you can either use the, the analog sticks or you can use the bumpers, and you have to hit them in time to the music, but it's not about hitting every note. It's about triggering power-ups and triggering special notes that do special things, and it's all about getting the highest score possible not getting a hundred percent on the song and it's a whole new spin on it if if you've ever played amplitude or frequency you should know what you're expecting even the psp version of rock band unplugged is a lot closer to it but instead of having four notes you have only two and it may seem like it's dumbed down but it's very fast paced and you you pretty much just have to act and jump around hitting the different tracks, hitting the notes, and you're not like planning things out, like let me do this star chart here and I'll activate this power here. You're just fucking playing and blazing through it. And it's... Mind you, this podcast does not promote blazing. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> but it was 15 bucks and itself had like 20, 25 songs. See, like for me personally, like, just that because alone of how, is worth for yeah. how much I'm into music... Those and 25, men. those 25 songs, I would get so fucking sick of so fast. <laughs> well, like, that's that's why it's also compatible with every single Rock Band DLC song. So when the game came out, it had a library, a potential library of thousands of songs. Potential. All right, All right next question. I'm ready. Can Wait, no, he had more. one more. My classic. Nobody cares. No, I, 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 care. Care. I care. Tell me. Go ahead. Whisper RPG me. for the original Game Boy called Great Greed. No one I've talked to has ever even heard of the thing. I have no, I have no it's, fucking clue. It's a Namco RPG. It, it was fairly dumbed down where there were there were a bunch of different spells, but you could only equip four at a time, each uh, mapped to one of the four directions on the D-pad in battles. Oh, okay. And then A would attack, B would oh. defend. Oh, oh. Uh, fucking uh, Dokapon! Fucking Dokapon Kingdom! How do we Kingdom? not mention yeah, Dokapon? No, I don't know how we missed that. Dokapon Kingdom, ladies and gentlemen, get... Get four people together. Four total. You can't have five. That'd be horrible. What four episode people. did you guys go on your Dokapon rant? I have no matter. idea, but it doesn't matter. Get four matter. people together. And get a version of it. And have a weekend available to yourself and just play Dokapon Kingdom. The, on Wii, the, Wii. Uh, the Wii one's really good. The Wii one's really good, yeah. Yeah, I like right. the Wii one. The Wii yeah. one. Uh, there's also a, a DS version. The DS version's hot. So yeah, good. DS version is hot, but the graphics are so abysmal it does kind of hurt the game. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think if if you if you want to be a little bit more intrigued by it and you want to stay engaged, get the Wii one. Um, and you don't even have to worry about everybody having their own controllers. You just have one fucking controller. Yeah, it's a pass and play. Pass and play. play. Nice. All right, next question. Yeah, Great Greed is a cool Game Boy game. Before you cut me the fuck off, God. with Dokapon. Damn it, dude! It's Dokapon. It's fucking. Dude, we, we could start an SML drinking game where it's... Every time every you mention Dokapon no, and Dark Souls... Every time somebody gets cut off, take a drink. <laughs> uh, we would be absolutely... The person who gets not. cut off has to take take a drink. No, I no the person doing out. the cutting off... Dude, you'd be unconscious. I would be absolutely... 20 minutes in, you would be We're gonna, We will down. do that. We will do that one of these weeks. No, I'll be dead. <laughs> like, I will literally fall <laughs> over and die. <laughs> like, well, I know the coolest part about Great Greed, everything is food-themed. Ha ha ha. Oh, like Out to Lunch? <laughs> have you ever played Out no, to Lunch? No, never. An, here's another obscure game. Uh, that no, I we, have to, we have to move on. We have really to move quick, on. really fast. Uh, oh, Super Nintendo. Fucker. I made you play it yesterday. I know you made me play it. Um, I just traded it into a store because I, I got rid of my copy of it. Um, Super Nintendo game, you are a chef. Um... Uh, there's a uh, some sort of thing that makes all the uh, food products have um, minds of their own, and they're running around levels, and you have to catch them and put them in a cage and lock them in a cage, and then that finishes the level, and then you go to the next one. But it is so much fun, and it's uh, you could probably find it for like twelve cents. Okay, contest entry. <laughs> Oh, yeah. we, all right. we have a contest entry from Joe Stratman, a.k.a. Henry Jones, in my circle of friends. Wait, 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 wait. New. 
Joe yeah. Stratman. Yes, S T. Here, oh, you're you're keeping all the S you're keeping all the entries. T R A A T M A N. Okay. Two N's. Okay. <laughs> his social so, security number is. <laughs> so his entry, and he's kind of cheating a little bit here, but I'll let it slide. The Sarah McLaughlin Love Machine. Sarah love Machine is one word. Is McLaughlin. Love I Machine. I spell that, so this is terrible. McLaughlin, <laughs> I'm putting an M at the end. McLaughlin. Love he says, No, wait, that's, that doesn't count. No. Huh? No, you just. Love Machine? That's, he he that's, has that as one word. Like a hyphenated. He says, I know love and machine should be two words, but damn nope. it, calling something the machine of love just doesn't sound as good. Nope, so. disqualified. <laughs> I don't know. I, disqualified. I, I'll, no. I'll let love machine is one word. We have no other entries. It counts. No, he needs to pick up another one. He needs to make one that actually, you know, fits the criteria. We're, we're not the small, medium, we are not large machine. <laughs> small, medium, large, medium. <laughs> large Kmart medium. <laughs> God damn it. I don't know. Until we get a second entry, I think by default his has to count. No. Well, we'll have more entries. <laughs> At least if he'll hear this and he'll be like, oh, I wonder how my entry's doing. Oh, shit, I have to put another one Joe in. Joe Stratton, <laughs> you piece of shit. You need to, you need to try harder. <laughs> you, need to, you need to learn how things are, are written on the papers. <laughs> <laughs> Words not good work. Mine words. <laughs> I fought for you, Henry, but... <laughs> Try work. harder. Henry, his name's Joe. Why would you... Because <laughs> in my what? circle of friends, everyone knows him as Henry Jones. Because I was the Joe in our circle. Mr. Jones? Yeah, Henry. Okay. So. Dr. Jones. Carry right. on. Next email from Ricky Henry. Hey, Joe, I enjoy the show. Keep up the good work. This is my go-to show for the drives where I know I'll be stuck in traffic. Can I get a shout-out for my new show that will be starting on April 26th? It's called Bit Pop Radio. It's hosted by myself and Bracey Snowcore Miller from the YouTube show Retro Snow. We'll be covering everything from old bubblegum to classic gaming. It's more or, more or less a pop culture nostalgia show. Thanks, Ricky. Find out more at thisisbitpop.wordpress.com. No, we will not give you a shout-out. <laughs> Dude, sorry, Ricky. After reading Ask, the entire email... Asking us to give you a shout-out is like... Uh, it's pretty much like taking a, a flyer of all that information that you just gave us and going down to a Sheets and putting it onto their bulletin No, it's, board. it's, it's like trying to advertise a dubstep concert at an old folks' home. I know. I, I just... No, not, not I don't feel comfortable broadcasting or pimping out bit pop radio hosted by Ricky Henry and Bracey Snowcorn Miller. I mean, I, I don't want to tell people they can find out more at thisisbitpop.wordpress.com. We are not cheap whores, but you could always pimp us back. Yeah, you, yeah, you, can, you, can, you can pimp us back or pay us in the future. I, I don't know if our listener is going to check out your show, but hey, listener, give them a shot hey, too, Mr. I guess. <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, hey, like, if there's anything that we could do to help, but if you think that we're going to help by saying that stuff, then, you know, cool, more power to you, but, uh... Next question. Okay, another one from Amanda, who's probably trying to make herself not seem like it's her. She says, note to you guys, I'm only sending in emails to make it look busy for you guys. Thanks. But, uh... Oh, cool! Thanks. Okay, this is totally not Amanda. Uh, hey, SML, what are your views on the console wars, such as Xbox versus PS3 versus PC? What are their strong points, and what do you think is the best platform? PC Master Race. We are not getting into yeah, this. PC, PC Master console Race. Wars. Being, being part of the PC Master Race, it's, it's, it, I don't even it have makes that me green sad computer, to look down at the console peons. I, I just I can't get into PC gaming. Dude, I'm, everything that you want to do on a console, you could do on a PC. Not true. No, see, right now, like, my personal opinion, I like my PC the most, but that's because I use it for a lot more than gaming, and I, I just enjoy it. I've always, I like, I liked building it, I like pushing it to the limits, I like it that when a new game comes out, that I can make it look better, or I can play it as intended, or I can play it at whatever the fucking way I want. I can go buy an Oculus Rift headset, and I can mod the game to work the way I want, and it's not that difficult. I, I like my PC stuff, uh, it's... There's just a lot that you can do with it, and the problem with it is that the the 
there is a barrier to entry, which is the cost. But when you get into, if you factor in a TV and a console, you can get a good monitor or a good TV that could house your computer and a cheap computer that will play the majority of games and give you wild benefits that people just don't even realize. You have to be a PC gamer to see them. Console side, I think the Xbox is the best console on the market because it is a gamer's console. It is aimed at what the gaming market is right now. It has good online content. It has good support for indie gamers, even though there's some controversy. You mean over Sony there. doesn't have good online? What do they Does have they... maintenance issues or any? <laughs> do they go down for months at a time. Um, no. Do they get hacked by a bunch of people and have a bunch of bored people? <laughs> I, I think the Xbox is the most complete package of a, of a video game system you can get out of the current generation. Um, yeah, that that could easily change next gen. If that could easily change. Microsoft next gen, I goes am on this casual focus bullshit that they've been going on the mm -hmm. past couple years. I can see why people are PC gamers and they look at like the PC master race, but I'm just not a PC gamer. I've always been a console guy. I'm always going to be a console guy. I don't want to sit at my computer desk and play on a PC. I'm the closest I ever got to really getting hooked on anything PC is Guild Wars Two. And even that, oh, your window popped up for packs. Hey, and, all right, I'm out. And even uh, everything sold out. Really? Oh shit! Monday is the only thing that's available. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, yeah, everything sold out. Wow. Okay. So going, Tim, Tim's not going to packs. No, well, but, uh, no, I'm, I, I probably am the, getting a press badge already. But yeah. I just but was the, the closest I ever got was Guild Wars Two, and even that, I ran an HDMI cable from the PC to my TV. Right. Which is still windowed, like it doesn't take up the full TV, and I don't know why. And That's, you can. And you can I had a, com that. I had a map, half the commands to a 360 controller. It's not 360 controller native, but. Well, just, right, but that's what I was trying to get at. The game. But like, that's what I, I was trying to get at before, where there are certain games, like everything that you want to do. But games that aren't compatible with the controller in mind, I have no interest in because I don't want to sit with a mouse and keyboard. You, you don't. But for me particularly, yeah, okay. That, that's what so, I'm saying. I can understand why people love PCs, but it's just not for me. Because my whole thing is, and I know this is going to sound really weird to certain people. Because I know he was busting. You my, are he really was, weird to a lot of people. He was busting my ball a lot for it, um, but uh, ball. <laughs> yeah, I only have one. Um, okay. So uh, you didn't know this? Hold the phone. Yeah, come you gotta, on, you man. Gotta like, be that's shitting like, me. No, dude. That's like one of the first things I tell people when I introduce myself. Or the first thing I tell people. That's yeah. news to me. Yeah. Anyway, um, m with my Fuck. gaming laptop. Uh, like, I enjoy playing Counter-Strike with a mouse and keyboard. Now, it might also be, be because I used to play Counter-Strike, obviously, mouse and keyboard when I was younger, and everything kind of translates over to the way that it is now. I kind of have that nostalgia-esque type of thing where it's like, that's just what I'm used to playing it with. However, same computer, Borderlands 2 first person shooter I feel more comfortable playing that with a controller yeah so it's just like there's certain games that I want to use there's certain games that I want to use a controller for and I can do that there's other games that I want to use a mouse and keyboard for well, and the, I can do that too the other big thing about the PC is a lot of games now that are that are on consoles are coming out on PC and getting PC preferential treatment right and there's a lot of big titles coming out soon too like Watch Dogs and even the new Metal Gear games are going to come out on PC. I mean, that's huge. Um, the Metal Gear games coming out on PC? Mm -hmm. I, I will not go near a console then. There's no <laughs> point. Because I could hook up a PS3 or a 360 controller. Official ones. I don't need to go out and buy a generic piece of shit. Yeah. I can go but get those official controllers. They will have support into the games for them already. And I'll just be able to go. You know a game I wish had controller support? Diablo 3. Uh, the PS3 version of Diablo yeah, 3 Yeah, the PS3 out, looks version looks great, but, like, I wanted to play that with the controller on the PC. Yeah, but you know what? That's one of those games that you just really, to play it properly, that's, th this is another example of why, that's one of those games that you, you just can't with a controller. The way that it was originally, like me, like, if someone goes to me and just goes, oh, yeah, I'm going to play Diablo, but I'm going to play it with a controller, to me, it's almost like blasphemy because I've been playing 
Diablo 1, Diablo 2, all of that mouse and keyboard yeah. for like the See, longest time. See, but I, I time. hate doing mouse and keyboard. Like, I hate playing a game like that. And that's why I didn't play Diablo as much as I wanted to because I hate mouse and keyboard. What about just mouse? Wasn't fun. It, move, click, click. I don't want to move with a mouse. I want a joystick or a D-pad to move my character okay, around. Okay, but then how are I you I don't gonna, want to click shit. Then how are you going to aim? I don't... In the direction you're walking. See, that's what makes it, like, you can't... It, Diablo's one of those games where it's like you're constantly getting fucking hounded from every angle, so it's like you have to swap, and you have to switch your directions of where you're aiming okay, so analog fast. Okay, stick, just move up, down, left, right, up, down. Okay, but then you're going to lose the accuracy. Like, it's, I, there's, there's very subtle, like... The way that some of the... Uh, I'm just thinking of watching you earlier today, and there was no need for accuracy whatsoever. I'm just Whoa, no, I, just, just, I'm a, uh, I was using my you, whirlwind barb, so I was just... You, you, and you can tell me all but. you want, but I'm just not on the same page. I will not find a way to enjoy mouse and keyboard. I played Diablo 3 on mouse and keyboard. I didn't like it. I tried mapping it to a controller, but that game is near impossible to map to a controller. You can. I've seen some people do it's it. pain in the ass... But it's it's just not for me. Well, more more power to you if you. Well, like it's I said, weird though I can because understand even like why Champions of Noroth, when I played Champions of Noroth, which is essentially almost like a Diablo game. Yeah. When I played that on PlayStation Two, it felt comfortable. But that's also because the way that the the game was designed, it was designed with consoles in mind and the control scheme. Diablo okay, Torchlight. Right. I played that on 360. I enjoyed the shit out of it. Now, exactly, but the way it's the way that it that was, was designed. designed for PC, though. No, it was designed originally for consoles. Really? Absolutely. Well, Torchlight's one of those indie games that was cross-platform. To be fair, I don't know. But it, to be honest, because even if you look at, if you were to try and put, and I know Diablo Three is going on. PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4, if you take a look at Diablo 2, okay, just the way that it was designed, and you wanted to use that on a controller, it would be absolutely impossible, because you have, like, eight different spells, yeah. hot, like, hot keyed, so that you can use this, you use this, you use this, as soon as you need it. There's no way in hell that you'd be able to go that quick between certain spells and stuff while still maintaining your directions by using two different analog sticks. It's li like it's literally know. impossible. Like juggling That's... all of that is just like it would be so much more of a hassle with a controller than with a mouse and keyboard. But it's only for certain games that I'm saying this. Because even like Trackmania, we used to play Trackmania in fucking college and you literally just used the up, down, left, right, and space bar. Yeah. Well, here's, here's something else that I thought was really fun about uh, Monaco, is you can have all four people play on the keyboard. You can have you can have everybody just kind of like sit, almost like it's an arcade. Yeah. And you can set it up like an arcade and just have everybody kind of crouch around because it's so simple. That's another thing that I, I really like about the PC is the uh, versatility, is the opportunity to have gaming experiences like that with people. Not to mention the fact that, like, the whole... Uh Nvidia, is it the Shield thing? The Shield, yeah, the Shield's interesting. They just they actually put out uh, their their blade too, the Razer blade. Um, but oh, no, that, that's Razer. That's Razer. Um, my bird, but my bird. but the Nvidia Shield, like that's like that's going to be a huge leap for PCs in my in, in, in my opinion. I mean, it's technically not like it is a PC. It's not a PC. It's a like it's a almost like a hybrid-esque type of thing. Um, but uh, the way that they're approaching it, it, it's with a lot of PC gamers in mind. Um, and, and it's just, it, that's an interesting concept to me as well. There's, it, as far as the whole console wars thing, um, I've owned a PS3, I've owned a, a 360. I enjoyed both. Um, I, I was never really a fan of the whole certain titles are going to come out on this, certain titles are going to come out on that, because um, I felt like I was constantly missing something unless yeah. I had every single console. Um, but uh, I think with PC, 
I could find enough stuff that I could be truly happy with what's available to me. Um, and it's very versatile. Um, and it's one of those kind of things where it's like you could dump a, a, a big investment into it. And you don't necessarily feel like you're getting kind of crapped out as soon as the cycle ends. Like if I were to go and spend the money on a 360, yes, it's a cheaper than a, uh, a, a PC. However, once the cycle ends, or even a couple, of, even just a year or two years after the, the the console comes out, it's like if you were to go and resell it, or try and you know get yourself to that next part of the the gaming industry, you're const It feels like you're constantly losing out in the consoles. Whereas PC, if you make an investment and build a really nice PC, that PC will last you cycle after cycle after cycle. And even when it comes time for you to upgrade, most of the time you really only have to upgrade one item, maybe two. So if you're doing it incrementally, it, it's, you know, you can have the best performing thing for games available for anyone at a comparable cost, depending on if you keep it up. You know, than, yeah, but there's that else. constant like, keeping things up thing, which I just well, see, I, I feel about. like I have to do that with Bo consoles. Bottom line is, we can never have this conversation without a fist fight starting. Not so, necessarily. So we're ending this. <laughs> no, I we, I. we will never have a unanimous answer on console versus PC. And see, but you know what? No, That's no, what's no, great no, about no, it. No, 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 no. We're That's what's good. No. That's no. what's good no. about it. No. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's what's great about it. You can Your PC um console, we'll leave it at that. Right. Best and console there's... between PS3 and 360 though? Uh It's tough because each each console has its own uh, Just fucking pick. <laughs> I, I can't. I really can't. We got to wrap this up. I uh, maybe so. Since you put me on the spot, Tim picked 360. I picked 360. Uh, I, I guess I'd have to go 360. That's right, you will. Anyway, featured song this week. I am, <laughs> I am proud to say that we have an exclusive featured track this week. Do we have any any more emails? No. There's one. We'll get to it next week. We spent way too much time the way it is. So we're always just going to keep one on the yes, back burner for the next episode. that way we episode. have email for next week. <laughs> At least one. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Featured song this week is from the band Gimmick. My buddy Chris Taylor used to be in the band Descendants of Erdrick. Broke off. He's doing his own thing with the band Gimmick. They have an EP, a three-song EP, releasing. He says later on this month, might be next month. Uh, just keep an eye on Facebook.com slash Gimmick Band to find out more information on that. And the song is Proto Man Castle from Mega Man 5 off their upcoming EP, Not For Resale. Which I, I, I think is a great name for, for an EP release. Uh, the band Psycho Stick, actually, their first album, uh, I was very impressed with their album name. It was We Couldn't Think of a Title. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, props for uh, having a creative... But yeah, album ch title. check out Gimmick... And this is Proto Man Castle.
just shipped my pants. I just shipped my pants. <laughs>